Welcome to this session for Power BI Tips and Tricks. I'm calling my session Dynamic Distribution. This is going to be part two of a four-part series that I already started in our last webinar. If you missed part one where I talked about my personal workspace, you can go back and view that. Today we're going to talk about workspaces. What are workspaces and what are they best used for? Well, they actually have two uses. Their primary use is to group content and collaborate in the development process right within Power BI service. It allows multiple users to have access to that workspace and share in the development cycle of the content that you're looking to distribute. There's also a secondary purpose, and that is to distribute content to smaller teams. Now, we'll talk about distribution to other users in our next session when we talk about apps. Apps are really created to distribute content across your organization. But if you have a really small practice and you don't have a lot of users, let's say you have a handful of users, then there's really no purpose in publishing apps. Uh, it might be a little bit of an overkill. So you can totally use workspaces to distribute content to smaller teams. The matter is uh, managing access and adding users and removing users as needed, which is not a problem, of course, when there's a small group of people. But as soon as you have a large distribution need, of course, apps is the better route to go. Workspaces allow you to delineate uh, security roles. I will show you what those roles are on the next slide. We'll talk about that a little bit more, but there is the ability to delineate who does what in the workspace. That allows you to delineate responsibilities. So in that development cycle that I mentioned that you might be sharing in across your team, certain individuals might have certain responsibilities and you're able to establish those in the workspace. There's a new folder hierarchy function available in workspaces that I will show you. It is currently in public preview, uh, but it is still best to group content by a narrower scope. So when you are creating a workspace, make sure that you're identifying a narrow scope for that workspace. So here are some ideas for you. Here's how you can delineate workspaces. You can create workspaces by specific subject areas or purposes. Let's say sales, finance, or inventory. You can also do it by departments, maybe a combination of those two first two bullets, maybe by a subject area and also department. Let's say you wanted sales reports for the marketing team. Also, you can delineate between projects. Maybe you have internal, external projects. That's a good way to delineate workspaces. And then there's always the environment. Maybe you have a development environment, a test environment, and a prod environment. Because you want to keep the scope narrow in your workspace, use short but very descriptive names for your workspace. So do have a plan around those. Here are the security roles that I mentioned. I'm not going to spend time going through each one of these. You can easily find these by just Googling Power BI workspace roles, and you can see there are four of them. The way that I like to describe these is first start with the ones that are easy. Notice the admin has access to do absolutely everything within the workspace. It is a best practice to add more than one admin to a workspace. That way you are not losing content in case of turnover or people changing jobs. So it's notice the admin can do literally anything. Then look at the viewer. The viewer can only interact and view with cer view certain items within the workspace, read only access. And then really the difference is, what is the difference between member and contributor? And the way that I like to distinguish those, notice that on the member side, there are a lot of things that are tied to apps. So publish and unpublish, change permissions for an app, update an app, share an item or share an app, uh, right? Feature apps. Uh, notice that a lot of things are around apps. Apps are meant for broad distribution. So members are those who have the privilege and responsibility to change a more dynamic distribution strategy within your company. Uh, if you don't want people changing permissions and publishing apps, you would be okay with using just a contributor role. I hope that is helpful. There are a few things to look out for, and I want to identify those things. 
Number one, it is very important to minimize the number of people who can edit content in a workspace. Because you have different roles that I just shared with you, make sure that people have the right role. Because you are talking about a collaboration space, right? And people can change things that they're not supposed to change. You can enable and regularly review audit logs to monitor workspace activities and ensure policy compliance. This is a great idea uh, to have regular reviews and auditing of what is happening in your workspaces to make sure that people are following your policies. Spend some time planning how you will organize in group content. So all the things that I just mentioned, if you do not do those things, imagine the amount of mess that you can create within your Power BI service. Be careful not to overshare individual content from workspaces. So on top of sharing the entire workspace, there is a share button right within the workspace that allows you to share individual content out of the workspace. So just be careful not to overshare and make sure that the right people are allowed to share out of that content so that you don't have content floating around and access floating around your organization. Use version control systems to manage Power BI content in workspaces. So there are going to be updates to your data sets, semantic models, and to your reports. Make sure that you are versioning what you are doing and that you have a good system in place. Implement a change management process for updates to reports and data sets. Make people responsible for making those changes. Make sure that there's a documented process and policy for how you go about those changes so that everyone is aware of who is responsible for those things. And lastly, this is kind of tied to everything that I just referred to here, and that is document Power BI policies and regularly train end users so that your end users know what the policies are, and in case things change, they know what to do. With all that being said, let me show you a demonstration of Power BI service. I'm in my Power BI service environment, and I'm currently in my personal workspace. On the left hand side, if I go to workspaces, I have the ability to add a new workspace. And here's how easy it is to add a new workspace. I simply click the new workspace button. Over here, I have the option to name a workspace. So let's call it marketing reporting. Notice there's a little description that I can write in here. Uh, do use these fields to document what you are creating so that others may see. So I can write something like this. Reporting workspace is created to group marketing content. Pretty straightforward. I can also add a little icon uh, that could be useful for the way that you're organizing your workspaces. But for now, I'm just going to hit apply. What, is, what that's going to do is create a workspace within my environment. So notice the name of the workspace is up top and the description that I wrote is also there. So now under my workspaces, you can see that I've created the workspace. If you created an icon, this is where it would show up and you can see how for others it might be useful. So now I have this workspace. I'm the only one that has access to it. And, but what I can do is manage access to this workspace. I can come in here and notice I can add people or groups. I can hit this green button. And now when I search for certain individuals within my tenant, I they come up and I'm able to add those individuals. And notice I can drop down on what permissions I can I want to give to these individuals or people. Also, a good thing for you to think about is there is a way to add Azure Active Directory groups in here. So instead of adding individuals and managing all of this access in these workspaces by individuals, if you have a if you have your users grouped in your Azure Active Directory, you can give access to an entire workspace by those groupings. So do take a look. That is how easy it is to do everything that I just mentioned. Make sure that you are following best practices and organizing your content well.